so far our discussion of binary numbers has only dealt with integers. But what if we want to convert a number like this from decimal into binary? Well, we have to deal with this decimal point somehow. Now, we can convert 62 into binary, and you can try that on your own, but you should find that it comes out to 111110. However, what comes after what we will call here a binary point in contrast to this decimal point? Well, we need some sequence of binary digits that represents the fraction 0 0.6875. Turns out that the digits that do that are 1, 0, 1, 1. So this binary number represents this decimal number. And the reason is the following. Recall that we can assign an exponent to each position of this binary number. In fact, the reason that this portion to the left of the binary point represents 62 is that 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 equals 62. But what about these values to the right of the binary point? Well, we've already been counting down to 0, and it turns out that we can keep counting down into the negatives. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. So now you need to recall what it means to have a negative exponent. 2 raised to the negative 1 is simply equal to 1 half. 2 raised to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over 2 to the 2, which is equal to 1 fourth. Similarly, 2 to the negative 3rd is 1 over 2 to the third, or 1 eighth, and 2 to the negative fourth is 1 over 2 to the fourth, or 1 sixteenth. So now that we know that these values correspond to negative exponents, we can compute this value and confirm that it will come out the same as follows. 0 0.1011. This one is 1 half. The 0 would be a position for 1 fourth, but 0 times anything is 0. And from this one, we have an eighth. And then from that one, we have a sixteenth. Now, if we add these up, we will get 11 sixteenths. And if you use a calculator, you will find this does indeed come out to 0 0.6875. Now, that is how we would convert from a binary number with a fractional component into a decimal number with a fractional component. We simply interpret the digits after the binary point as having these negative exponents and add them up accordingly. But how would we get this decimal result if we, sorry, how would we get this binary result if we had started with this decimal result? Well, we already know how to convert from 62 to binary by a process of repeated division by 2. We can convert from this fractional portion of the number to binary using a process of repeated multiplication by 2, as follows. I have 0 0.6875. I'm going to multiply this by 2. So I'll get 0 there. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15. 
16 plus 1, so I have 17. And then 12 plus 1 is 13. And I have a 1 to the left of the decimal point. Now, the value that ends up to the left of this decimal point will always be a 1 or a 0. And so we will use these values to build up the fractional component of our binary number. So let's keep this separate. This will end up corresponding to the exponent 2 to the negative 1. And let's multiply this result by 2, ignoring this 1. Or another way of thinking that is we're going to treat this position as a 0 in this new multiplication. So in this new multiplication, 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15. And then 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So now this is a 0 to the left of the decimal point. Save that. This corresponds to the position 2 to the negative 2, which is consistent so far with what we know the answer should ultimately be. We'll continue multiplying by 2. 2 times 5 is 10 again. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15. Here we have a 1, which we'll keep separate. This corresponds to 2 to the negative 3. And then we're left with 0.5 times 2 equals 1.0. And this is for 2 to the negative 4. And once we have a 0 here, any further multiplication by 2 would simply equal 0. Hence, there is no point in continuing. And that means we can take these digits and order them into 0 0.1011, 0 1, which is exactly what we had previously.